and I'm Cincinnati man. I'm back. I'm here to talk about Fallout episode ten, episode eight. I was Called tired. Again, episode eight. Um, you know, this is this is this show is very interesting. I don't know how many people out there, but has there ever been a show that narratively you did not like during the season as it progressed, and when it got to the end, the concepts. Or the conclusion of that series, you were like, "Wow, that was very interesting what they were trying to do." But I hate how we got here, and that's what happened. The concept of what they the, what they revealed about the overseers and how it was all vault, vaults, vaults, not vault. Well, there's a uh, um, people that own the vault plan um, to have their have each. As several vaults around the country to have their own regulations, their own rules, and they'll see who, what plays out in humanity. You know, the strongest, the fittest, whoever, whatever. Oh, and you'll have all the scientists, and you'll have all the kids. Whatever kids live are the smart ones. Or you'll you'll raise only you'll raise mutants. You know, um, that was a very interesting concept. The idea that you that some people live in these incubators, not incubators, these uh st- these um. Not stat, um, these chambers that kept them alive all these hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of years. I was like, wow, that's very interesting. Like that idea. Still didn't show how Do- uh, Dr. Moldiver, Moldiver, forgot her to say her name. Still don't know how she's, she sta- stayed around so long. Maybe it was an opposite faction trying to fight against him, more than likely. Um, You know, uh, what else happened? Okay, let's get into the things that drove me nuts. So let me get this straight. Uh, once again, like I said, Norm did not do anything to alert anybody else. He just decided to go on his own and try to figure it out. Uh, Chet was like, well, I uh, guess we're, Chet did the right thing. He's like, well, we're not going to figure out anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, just go with my girl. And it was they never really established. It's just kind of like a known thing. He's just with her now. And... um. You know he's going. He's going to live his vault life, but uh, it still don't make any sense. It's just like, okay, Chet. Well, you know what you gotta do. Just go into hibernation, so we're never going to see him again. You know. Um, as far as far as their vaults, it's screwed. There's probably going to be a lot more murder behind, a lot more behind the scenes murder, a lot more behind the scene behind the scenes politics, like it has been, and maybe. Maybe eventually uh, Chet will man up, hopefully, over time. But as far as far as right now, in order to man up, he'll probably eventually have to throw hands at his his uh, guess's girlfriend. I guess that he decided to raise her kid or whatever. Hey, sound like uh, they're doing what we do now in the future, <laughs> trying to raise somebody else's kids. <laughs> Good luck, step daddy. Um. The ghoul's background. It's interesting how it should be heartbreaking, but he's such a disgusting character now. I really don't care about his heartbreaking loss. I kind of want him dead. Um, you know, his wife was evil. Apparently, his wife and his daughter might still might still be alive somewhere across the across America. So that could be interesting. Um I don't I I don't like how it's all connected. Like, oh, he knows the father. He knows the vault. He knows this. It's just all a little bit too convenient, you know. Um now, Maximus. No, no, I'm I'm saving for last. Lucy. Lucy's whole world was coming crumbling down. And I suspected it. I should have talked about it earlier. I don't think I did. I suspected that this was gonna happen. That the father was going to be evil and and every because they, they they telegraphed it like you don't know what your father did and all that stuff. Okay, so um, I'm not sure. I think that uh, I don't know what to make of this because it's like so is Lucy going? Let me guess. In season two, Lucy's going not going to give a damn about the world. She's going to give a damn about secret revenge on her father, but not necessarily anything else. What about her brother? What about her cousin? Is she going to go liberate them? Who knows? You know, Lucy learned a lot over the season. Like, oh, p- people are already gone up top already and celebrated, and then it got blown up again. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see Lucy as, as 
as stronger of a person as she was back then, I think she should be more hopeless of anything, even weaker. Because now if you don't know who to trust or how to navigate, how are you going to survive this world at all? And I don't, I don't get how her mom is still around. Her mom, she can't eat. How's that thing? That thing is a cadet. That thing is a burnt crisp of a, that's the most decayed ghoul we've ever seen. Just, just sitting there. It didn't make any sense. Along fresh apples. We know ghouls eat flesh. Whatever. Um, how did Moldaver even um get get that ghoul? Oh, I, you know, and the idea that her father raged waged war because she didn't want to come back down and blew up a whole city that was just ridiculous. Now here we go, Maximus getting a promotion because he lied, but since he was doing the strongest will survive, he he, he took he took power. They gave him a promotion. He's going to lead the knights. He can't fight. He can't repair any of his own stuff. He has no no real strategy. I'm going to give myself up, but I know I ain't got it on me. So I'm going to be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can lead you to it, which leads you to, yes, it leads you to finding, um, ah, oh, shit. I'm sorry. It leads you to finding Lucy, but you can get Lucy killed too at the same time by bringing a war to where she's at. How does that make sense? And why does he always got to have some scar? He had, a, he had a scar across the bridge of his nose. That finally went away. That were or, or a, a, a bad cut. Now he got it right on the side of his face. And of course he gets knocked out. He doesn't do he didn't do anything heroic. He didn't kill anybody. He got he got blown up in the show. A uh, a uh, uh, um what is it? A projectile lender right next to him. He just he just he literally next to him, he just shakes it off and just keeps walking. I'm like, are you serious? That stuff was blown up next to people right and left. You, hey, season two, y'all need to get y'all placement of the CGI bullets and explosions together because there have been several times where people should have blown up when stuff blew up right in front of them, next to them, when they got beat up so bad they shouldn't even be around. They had no super strength or nothing. They just, they just get up like whatever. And then he got another promote. He got known as a legend for killing somebody he didn't even kill. And don't get me started. Look, Dane tore dane 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 that talks like this yeah i didn't know when when dane saved him from being destroyed by the knighthood or killed no he didn't he, uh i lied i cut myself i didn't and then she gonna well dane gonna look at gonna look at uh uh oh man maximus and be like i didn't know they was gonna gonna try to kill you and stuff are you serious do you know what kind of society you in get out of here I ain't believing that for one minute. It's y'all doing that survival of the fittest, acting like y'all don't know that what they gonna do. Get out of here. And then to send Dane out into the field, hopping along, just hopping with a bad with a bad uh, leg. Are you serious? That's almost like you sending Dane out to get killed. Get out of here. So yeah, this season is frustrating because elements that I did. My big thing with a lot of stuff I watch is I had a buddy Fred. He was like, he got mad at me. I guess he gets annoyed me because I'm talking like X Men '97, but I said he said you got to suspend disbelief. But guess what? You can do that with anything. Don't 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 question anything you watch. My thing is the question is can a story be compelling enough with characters that you're willing to let go of plot holes? Because nothing in this in this world of people making fiction plot plot hole proof. This is not. It's just can you give me a convincing enough story where I'm willing to let some things go? And in this, I wasn't. It's very annoying. Well, Cincinnati man, thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate um, anyone who pops in and checks it out. I also appreciate new people uh, stopping by. You got you got this far, you know. Go ahead and, and like and subscribe. Or if you already subscribed, like share with your friends. Um, I'm here for conversation. Um, I know some people would say, why don't you watch stuff you only like? I'm like, how are you going to learn anything in life if you just watch everything that you like? What if you watch something that you thought you were going to like and you didn't like it? Then you got to say that. How about I just watch a little bit of, check out things that interest me here and there and see where it falls. You know, next thing I'm going to watch is Bridgington. Yeah, you're like, what? Yeah. I'll, I'll get to that story later. Well, thank you. Take care. And bye-bye.